hello students welcome back to our class uh, we are actually discussing about how to make frequency distribution tables otherwise how to represent the given data into a frequency distribution table so for that here you can see one problem that the highest uh, the heights of 50 students see here the things that you need to identify 50 students so there are totally 50 number of students it means there are 50 scores okay so, measured to the nearest centimeters have been found to be as follows. This is what the scores given. These are the heights of the students and represent the data given above by a grouped frequency distribution table taking the class intervals as 160 to 165, 165 to 170, 170 to 175. So, this is what is the data and what can you conclude about their heights from the table. So, what is the more information that you can give? See here. I am going to find out what is the highest score and what is the lowest score because I need to find out the total number of class intervals. If you remember the formula that we discussed to find out the total number of class intervals is equal to range divided by class weight. See here 160 to 165, 165 to 170, 170 to 175. See here 160 to 165, 165 to 170 the range is going to be only 5. But once one more thing here you need to understand first is 160 to 165, 165 to 170. Once you observe this 165 is here as well as here. Suppose if you identify one 165 belong to the first class interval otherwise second class interval does not belong to the first class interval belong to the second class interval only please do remember that ok fine. See here I am going to find out what is the range of this data in order to find range of my data what do you mean by range range is equal to highest score minus lowest score so highest score how do i identify highest score I how do i identify lowest score that is what i need to find okay see here 162 so here 162 is maximum and here there is no 16 there is 171 is also maximum. So, 171 here maximum, here 170 and there is no 170, there is no 170. See till now I identified 171 is the maximum and there is no 170, there is no 170, 172 is also there ok and uh, 173 is also there ok. This is 170 only. So, the highest score is going to be 173. So, highest score is 173 minus what is the lowest score now I should find out the lowest score uh, if I observe here 151 is the lowest here 150 is also the lowest and here 153 so 150 is the lowest there and um, 150 150 so 150 is the lowest according to the data given so the lowest is equal to 150. 173 minus 150 is going to be 23. So, that is the range of the data. After finding the range and width of the class interval or size of the class interval is going to be 5. So, the number of class intervals is going to be number of class intervals is equal to range by width. Range is equal to 23 divided by width is equal to 5 is approximately 5 4s are 20, 5 5s are 25. So, approximately it is equal to 5. So, I need to find totally 5 class intervals. So, what are those 5 class intervals? First class intervals, they are starting from 160, not 160. What is the range? Uh, the lowest score is going to be 150, right? So, that I should start from 150. So, 150 to 155 and 155 to 160 and then 160 to 165 and then 165 to 170 and then 170 to 175 because my highest score is only 173 ok. So, that 173 will be here of course, 175 may or may not be there, but our 173 will be here that is why you need to consider one more class interval. After finding the class intervals now go to tally marks. I already told you if tally marks are required you can use the tally marks otherwise directly you can find out the frequency. So, I am going with the tally marks for that first I should take the numbers 
from 150 to 155. 150 to 155 means I should not consider 155 because I should consider 155 only in the next class. So, my range is 150 to 154. Okay. I should not, I will not go by row, I will go by column. Okay. 150 to 154. See here. 150 to 154. 1, 2 numbers are there. Okay. So, that I will write 2 numbers here. 2 numbers and uh, 150. This is 1 and this is 2. Again, 2 numbers. 150 to 154 only. So, this is one number, this is one more number, again two numbers. So, this is 5, 4 and 5 and then 6 because 6 are there already, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and um, here 150 to 154 nothing is there, 150 to 154, 154 is there, this is 1 and nothing is there. So, 2 and after that 154 is there nothing is there. So, one more 1 and 153 is there. So, one more 1 and 150 is there, 154, 2 are there already 4, 5 and one more 6 and here 151 is there, 1 only 1. So, totally how many are there? 5 plus 5 equal to 10 plus 2 is equal to 12 are there. Let me check whether 12 are there or not. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, these are totally 12 number of students are there. Okay. So, I will write here frequency is going to be 12. Did you understand how to do that? Now, I am going to write the frequency directly. So, in order to find the frequency, now my scores are 155 to 169. 155 to 169 means what? 155 should be included till 169. 155 to 160, sorry, 155 to 160 means 155 to 159. 159 is not there, 159 is there, this is 1 and 2 and range is 155, 2 right, 155, 156 is there, okay, and 158 is there, 158 is there, and then 159 is there. 156, 158 and nothing is there, nothing is there, 159 is there. So, how many numbers are there totally? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, these are totally 9. So, after that, these are totally 9 numbers and what next? I should go with 160 to 165. So, 160 will be included till 164. 160 will be included. 160, okay. 162, 161. So, there are 3 numbers and 164 also there, 4 numbers, 5 numbers, 6 numbers, 7 numbers, 8 numbers, 9 numbers, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, there are totally 13 are there from 160 to 164, right. So, this way we can finish the table, but after finding this all years, then totally you will have to get 50. Suppose, if you do not get 50, then what does it mean? You did some mistake in counting. So, please go back and finish the counting. Okay? So, this way you can easily make class intervals, tally marks as well as frequency distribution table. Right? Let us move on to the next problem. See here the next problem is 3 coins were tossed 30 times simultaneously. Each time the number of heads occurring was noticed down as follows. Prepare a frequency distribution table for the data given above. This is just similar to the blood groups problem. See, when 3 coins were tossed, so 30 times simultaneously, each time the number of heads occurring, number of heads, so first time number of heads is 0, second time number of heads is 1, third time 2 and so on. Right? See, 
number of heads occurs 0 number of times, number of heads occurring 1 number of times, 2 number of times and 3 number of times. See here uh, like number of heads, okay. number of heads occurred here number of times it occurred number of heads for example number of heads um, 30 times simultaneously zero number of heads 1 as well as 2 as well as 3 right so zero number of heads occurred how many number of times see here it is very much clear 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are six number of times zero number of heads occurred and similarly one number of heads occurred how many number of times see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 10 number of times one head only occurred okay and coming to see here there is no 2 here 2 occurred one time 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times so 9 times number of heads 2 occurred right so 3 number of heads occurred how many number of times see here this is 1 okay and this is 2 and here this is 3 and this is 4 and this is 5 okay so 5 number of times when you add all of them how much you get 6 plus 9 equal to 15 plus 5 equal to 20 plus 10 is equal to 30 right so this is what is frequency distribution table so this way you can easily figure out the frequency distribution table right so moving on to the next problem here the next problem is a survey conducted by an organization for the class for the cause of illness and death among the women between the ages 15 to 44 worldwide so found the following figures in percentage reproductive health conditions 31.8 percentage and uh, neurophysical conditions 25.4 and injuries 12.4 and uh, uh, cardiovascular conditions and 4.3 and respiratory conditions as well as other causes represent the information given above graphically so given above graphically means see there are only 5 only 6 set of causes and here female fertility uh, female fatality rate uh, in percentage this is 31.8 25.4 12.4 4.3 4.1 22.0 right so in order to represent this data graphically first of all this reproductive, reproductive health conditions up to how much percentage 31.8 percentage see the best way to represent this graphically is by showing bar graphs showing bar graphs for that bar graphs what are we going to do here we are going to do that take x axis as well as y axis okay this is origin and you can give 1 1 centimeter to 1 1 cos 1 1 centimeter to 1 1 cos means for example this is the first centimeter this is second centimeter second centimeter for the cos 1 so this is cos 1 and leave 1 centimeter and give the second centimeter for the cos 2 and then leave 1 centimeter for third one is give cos 3 ok so like that and on y axis you will have to take definitely as per the scale so here the scale minimum value is 4.1 and maximum is 31.8 minimum 4.1 maximum 31.8 when you draw it on your graph sheet you can easily identify 31 or 32 squares 32 centimeters on the graph otherwise if it is not available you will have to adjust your scale so when you are adjusting your scale for example if you want to give 1 centimeter is equal to 2 units then it would be 2 and 4 and 6 and then 8 and then 10 and so on then each small centimeter divided into 10 small lines there is that they are each 1 millimeter so here 1 centimeter is given as 2 ok 1 centimeter is equal to 2 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters right so 10 millimeters is given as 2 so 1 millimeter will be given as 2 divided by 10 2 divided by 10 is equal to 0 0.2 what do you mean by that each small for example 
between 0 and 2 there are 10 small lines right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then each small line so from here to here it is 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 and then 0 0.8 1 1.2 1.4 1.6 and so on like that 2 ok. So, you can divide your scale like that each 1 millimeter is equal to 0 0.2 as per the scale and then for example, I have reproductive system 31.8 uh, as per this space that I am going to write here. Um, cardiovascular conditions 4.3 for example, that is C 4. So, I am taking here C 4, C 4 is going to be 4.3. So, 4.3 means this is 4 right, 4.3 means see here, 4.3 is available, where is that 4.3 is available? This is 4 next to 4.2 next to 4.4, .4. see this is 4.2 next to 4.4. In between 4.2 and 4.4, there is a line. So, correspondingly, see, correspondingly, you will have to take scale here. Now, this is what is about C4, ok. And if you want, you can write here 4.3 also. So, like that, you can have scales, ok. So, maybe like this, or maybe like this. So, anyway, C1 is more right. So, you can represent the data graphically like that and after doing all these things otherwise you can start even before where are you taking causes and where are you taking female fertility rates. So, here on x axis you are taking causes and on y axis you are taking female fertility rates ok. So, this is what and immediately you will have to write the scale also. So, what is the scale that you are writing here? scale for y axis because x axis you are taking the numbers. So, does not matter. So, scale on y axis definitely you will have to mention that on y axis 1 centimeter is equal to 2 units, 1 centimeter equal to 2 units. If you want to give more information then 1 millimeter is equal to 0 0.2 units. So, then it is the clear cut information about your graphical representation of the given frequency distribution table. So, this way we can easily figure out this right. Let us move on to the next question. Here the question is uh, the following table gives the lifetimes of 400 neon lamps represent the given information with the help of a histogram. See here what is the difference between a histogram as well as frequency uh, what is that histogram as well as bar graph. See bar graph you can uh, identify in even cricket scores and all you can see the bar graph that in first two hour what is the number of number of runs scored by one particular batsman otherwise particular team. See there you can see the individual information, but in the case of histogram so definitely the connectivity should be there connectivity from the first class interval to the second class interval right and especially in order to frame the histogram here in order to frame a histogram. 300 to 400, 400 to 500, 500 600, uh, this is what uh, is about uh, the given information. I am going to represent this in the form of frequency graph, that frequency graph is especially histogram. See here histogram all the time you will have to take the class interval should be on x axis. So, class intervals of the given frequency distribution should be taken on x axis and the corresponding frequency should be taken on y axis, this is y axis and here width of the class interval should be always same, width of the class intervals should always be same. See here 300 to 400, generally this is origin it means 0 ok. So, on the number line this is 0 and this is also number line this is 0, but if you start from 0 where is the 300. So, that it takes more time so that you can use one particular uh, you know particular symbol or particular way of representing this is what called kink kink in the sense it is already you are you are in live live position ok so it means it's already started the life already started and now see here each width is equal to 100 units so that is why i am starting from 300 ok 300 and then 400 and then 500 and 600 you will have to see here maximum 100 uh, 1000 right. So, 600 
सेवन हंड्रेड एट हंड्रेड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड देन थाउजेंड ओके सो दीज आर क्लास इंटरवल्स नाउ कमिंग टू द फ्रीक्वेंसीज दैट इज नथिंग बट नंबर ऑफ लैम्स सी द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू एज वेल एज मिनिमम वैल्यू हियर मैक्सिमम वैल्यू इज गोइंग टू बी एटी सिक्स एंड मिनिमम वैल्यू इज गोइंग टू बी ऑफकोर्स इट कुड बी फोर्टीन सो मिनिमम इज एटी सिक्स इन द सेंस If you take one centimeter equal to one unit on y-axis, the graph paper is not required, not sufficient at all. So then you will have to think logically to take the scale on y-axis. For that, uh, it's maximum eighty-six. So that if I take one centimeter is equal to one centimeter equal to ten units, I think uh, uh, it probably that's sufficient. So I am taking one centimeter equal to ten units. So this is ten, and then twenty, and then thirty, and then forty, and then fifty. And sixty, seventy, eighty. Of course, one more ninety. So one centimeter equal to one unit. Then easily you can identify one small millimeter is equal to one unit, right? Because one centimeter equal to ten unit here. You will have to write the scale also. What is the scale here? Scale is going to be on x-axis. On x-axis, one centimeter is equal to hundred units. And On y-axis, one centimeter equal to how much? On y-axis, one centimeter is equal to ten units. You understand? So, with the help of this information, you can easily figure out three hundred to four hundred. First, to take three hundred and see fourteen. Where is that fourteen? Fourteen is about ten. Between this is fifteen, right? So, below fifteen line is fourteen, and three hundred to four hundred is fourteen. So three hundred to four hundred is fourteen means you will have to go vertically till fourteen, and then you go horizontally till four hundred. So this is what is the histogram for the class interval three hundred to four hundred. If you want, you can write fourteen also here. Okay, and the second class interval four hundred to five hundred is fifty six. Four hundred to five hundred is fifty six means go along with four hundred vertically. And stop where fifty six is available. So fifty six means so maybe here it is fifty six, and go horizontally till five hundred. Okay, so this is fifty six. After that, five hundred to six hundred is sixty. Five hundred to six hundred is sixty means just go up, and this is sixty. Go horizontally and then go vertically. This is sixty. And after that, six hundred to seven hundred is eighty six. So six hundred go vertically from six hundred till where that eighty six is located. Suppose this is eighty six, and go horizontally till seven hundred. After that seven hundred to eight hundred is seventy four. Where is that seventy four? Seventy four means you will have to come down. So for example this is seventy four. So start from here, and this is seventy four. Okay, and how much is this? This is eighty six, and eight hundred to nine hundred is sixty two. So sixty-two means again you will have to come down. So this is sixty-two for example. So sixty-two go horizontally till nine hundred. Nine hundred thousand is forty-eight. So forty-eight means again it is over here. So for example this is forty-eight and this is sixty-two, right? And if you want you can uh, give colors also for every single uh, for every individual histograms. But here you need to understand one thing that. histograms are in the shape of rectangles okay every single histogram is a rectangle and we can identify one more thing here is every histograms width is same but length may not be same so length of histograms may or may not be same whereas width of histograms must be same right and every single histogram is a rectangle in order to draw histogram you will have to consider class intervals on x axis and their corresponding frequency should be on y axis corresponding frequency should be on y axis and class interval should be on x axis so this way you can draw easily and you can represent the data by using histogram and what is second thing how many lamps have a lifetime of more than 700 hours more than 700 hours in the sense see here these are hours right number of uh, lamps and lifetime lifetime is equal to more than 700 800 900 and 1000 so more than 700 hours in the sense what from 700 onwards you will have to consider so 700 to 874 800 to 
900,000 is 48. So, the answer for the second problem is 74 plus 62 plus 48. So, E is going to be 4 plus uh, 8 plus 2 equal to 10 plus 4 14 4 1 6 plus 4 equal to 10 plus 1 11 plus 7 is equal to 18. So, there are totally 184 lamps whose lifetime is more than 700 hours. So, this way we can easily answer this problem. So, these are what the problems given in um, you know the concept called statistics. So, in this statistics we talk about how to form a frequency distribution table and how to find out the range and after finding out the range as well as frequency distribution table we need to identify the class intervals. Okay? So, they are continuous class intervals as well as discrete class intervals also. So, after that there is one important concept called um, you know the important concept that I can consider that important concept is called measures of central tendencies. What do you call that? Measures of central tendencies. So, what are measures of central tendencies? There are three measures of central tendencies. First one is arithmetic mean arithmetic mean and second one is median and third one is mode. So, these three are called measures of central tendencies. With the help of these measures of central tendencies, we can find arithmetic mean. What do you mean by arithmetic mean? Average and we can find median as well as mode also. So, first let us try to understand what do you mean by arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean means that the average of the scores. So, arithmetic mean is arithmetic mean is indicated by x bar and suppose if you have n number of observations, those n number of observations are like x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus 1 plus x n. This is the sum of n number of observations divided by total number of observations is equal to n, then sum of observations divided by total number of observations will give you the arithmetic mean of the frequency, arithmetic mean of the raw data as simple as that. And you can use summation or sigma notation also for this. You know what is sigma notation? That is sigma x i where i stands from 1 to n. See sigma is the indication for sum or summation. First when you give i is equal to 1, it would be x 1 means the first observation and then i is equal to 2 second observation and then i is equal to 3 third observation till which observation we should give till n. So, till i is equal to n then you will get x n means the last observation. So, that is the meaning of sigma i is equal to 1 to n x i divided by n is already there. So, divided by n this is what is the formula to find out the arithmetic mean of the given observations x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on x n. Okay? For example, x 1 is an observation repeated f 1 times and x 2 is an observation repeated f 2 times, x 3 is an observation repeated f 3 times and so on, x n is an observation repeated f n times, then what is the arithmetic mean of this data? See here, x 1 is an observation repeated f 1 times, for example, 5 is an observation repeated 3 times, then we will have to write 5 plus 5 plus 5 3 times and then you will have to add everything divided by whatever the number of observations. But instead of doing all these things, 5 repeated 3 times, right? instead of writing 5 plus 5 plus 5, then you can write 5 into 3, right? because 5 is repeated 3 times, multiplication is repeated addition as you are all aware of that. So, the arithmetic mean of these observations are x 1 repeated f 1 times, so x 1 into f 1, x 2 repeated f 2 times, so x 2 f 2 and so on, x n repeated f n times that x n f n divided by how many number of observations are there, yes it is very much clear, x 1 repeated f 1 number of times means x 1 is f 1 number of times, so f 1 plus similarly f 2 plus similarly f 3 and so on plus f n. This is what is called weighted arithmetic mean. 
So weighted arithmetic mean means the observations are repeated. Then we use this formula, but there is no difference between both the formulas. You understand? But by using this formula, more easily we get the value of the arithmetic mean of the given observations. So and we can indicate this by sigma notation also as like the previous one, sigma f i into x i, where i is equal to 1 to n divided by sigma f i, again i is equal to 1 to n. This is what is the formula for weighted arithmetic mean. So, simply arithmetic mean is nothing but average of the scores, hope you understand, right. So, moving on to median of the scores. What do you mean by median of the scores? The name itself says that median, median means the middle most number. So, how to identify the middle most number? Before you identify what is the median of the scores, the very first thing that you have to do is arrange the given observations in ascending order or descending order of the magnitude. Arrange the given observations arrange the given observations or given scores in a particular order of magnitude, in a particular order of magnitude. So, after arranging them in a particular order of magnitude, the second one, count the number of observations count the number of observations, okay. count the number of observations. So, after counting the number of observations, third one, if the number of observations, number of observations let it be some n. So, if the number of observations is odd, if the number of observations is odd, then you can say that median of the scores, median of the scores is going to be n plus 1 by tooth observation. Okay. See, it is very easy to identify. So, median is equal to n by n plus 1 by tooth observation. It means for example, your scores are 3, 7, 9, 6, 5. These are the observations. If you want to find out the median, what is the very first thing? Arrange the given scores in particular order of magnitude. It means either ascending order or descending order of magnitude. I am going to arrange them in, uh, uh, in the order such that smaller one to the greatest one. See here, 3 is the smallest and then 5 and then 6 and then 7 and then 9. Okay? After arranging them, Count the number of observations. How many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 means odd number of observations, right? So, if n is odd, yes, n is odd only, then the median is equal to n plus 1 by tooth observation. The number of observations is equal to 5. So, n plus 1 by tooth observations means what? 5 plus 1 by tooth observation. 5 plus 1 by tooth means 6 by 2 is equal to third. So, what is third observation here? 6 is the third observation. Therefore, this 6 is called median of the scores. Did you understand? So, this way, if the number of observations is odd, you can say that n plus 1 by tooth observation is the median of the scores. Suppose, if the number of observations is n is even, if the number of observations are even, even means what? Again, I am taking one more example. So, I am directly arranging them. So, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 13. So, these are the scores. How many scores are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 scores are there. Means, n is equal to even. If n is equal to even, what about the median? So, median will be the average of the middle most numbers. So, what are the middle most numbers? 5 and 7 are middle most numbers. So, here 5 is which number? Out of 6 numbers, 5 is third number. So, 6 numbers, third number means what? n by tooth number. So, that n by tooth plus n by 2 plus 1 observation. I am taking the average now divided by 2 n by tooth value plus n by 2 plus 1th value whole divided by 2 will be the median of the scores. You understand? n by tooth observation 
plus n by 2 plus 1 the observation it means the next observation divided by 2 will be the median of the score. So, this way you can easily figure out what is the median of the scores for this what is the median 5 and 7 are the middle most numbers. So, 5 plus 7 divided by 2 is equal to 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So, 6 is the median of the scores 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 13. So, this way we can easily figure out if the number of scores are even or number of scores are odd then we can find out median of the scores. Hope you understand. Next, what is the next measures of central tendency that is mode. What do you mean by mode of the data? So, mode of the data means most common value or, or nothing but you can say that the observation which occur more frequently, the observation, the observation or observations which occur more frequently is called or are called mode of the data. For example, my observations are 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. These are the observations. Out of these observations, is there any observation repeated? Yes, the observation 3 repeated 2 number of times. Therefore, mode of this particular data is going to be 3. So, 3 is mode of the data. For example, my observations are 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, 9, 11. So, for this data, 3 repeated 2 times, 5 also repeated 2 times. Therefore, this data contains 2 modes. What are the modes? 3 is one mode, 5 is also another mode. Okay? For example, my data is 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, 7, 7, 9. See here, 3 repeated 2 times, 5 also repeated 2 times, but 7 repeated 3 number of times. So, 7 repeated more number of times, that is why mode of the data can be considered as 7. right? So, 7 is mode of the data. So, with this discussion, we understand one thing that, what do you mean by mode of a frequency distribution? Mode of a frequency distribution means the observation or observations which occur more frequently, repeat more frequently is said to be mode of the data. Suppose, if I take a data like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, what is mode of the data? There is no observation repeated. Since there is no observation repeated, you should say that there is no mode for this frequency distribution. You should not write 0. If you write 0, it means that 0 repeated the number 0 is repeated, but 0 is not there in this and it is not repeated. So, that you please do not write 0 is the mode of this kind of data. Okay? So, if there is no number repeated, then you should say that there is no mode of the data. So, mode is all about the repetition of the number, the repetition of the scores, the repetition of the digits. Right? Now, we are going to um, understand one more very important thing here is, see for this data there is one mode, there is there are two modes, there is one mode, there is no mode. It means for the given observations or for the given data, mode may or may not exist. For this kind of data there is no mode, that is it. So, for some given data, mode may or may not exist. Suppose, if mode exists, it may or may not be unique. Unique means what? A single mode. See here there is only one mode, but here there are two modes. There is only one mode, there is no mode. So, that is why we understand here one thing that for the given observations, mode may or may not exist. If mode exists, it may or may not be unique. Okay? So, this data has only one mode. If a data has only one mode, this kind of data are said to be unimodal data. What do you call the data? Unimodal data is nothing but the data consists of only one mode. If a data consists of two modes, if a data consists of two modes, then it is said to be bimodal data. 
what do you call the data by model data. So, finally, coming to the conclusion that mode of a frequency distribution means the observation or observations occur more frequently is or are said to be mode of the data. For the given data, mode may or may not exist. If mode exists, it may or may not be unique. If a data has only one mode, then the data is said to be unimodal data. If a data has two modes, then it is said to be a bimodal data. So, this is about frequency distribution as well as measures of central tendencies. Hope you understand and enjoy the class. Uh, because this is one of the most important of course, right from 6th grade or 5th grade onwards uh, you keep understanding and you keep studying this uh, uh, this chapter in the form of data handling otherwise statistics or something something, but we are discussing the same thing, but in a better way we discussed today in this class hope you understand and enjoy the class. Thank you.